Hoover Tower provides a picturesque setting at Stanford University. Division II Men's Rugby Championship straight ahead on CSTV. We're at Stanford in the San Francisco Bay Area. CSTV presents the Rugby Collegiate Championships, Division II Men's Title Game, Salisbury of Maryland taking on Arkansas State. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Weber. Rugby is one of the fastest growing sports on American college campuses. We're thrilled to bring you what should be a dynamic championship game. Salisbury, the top seed, playing well en route to this championship game, beating Georgia Southern. And the Coast Guard Academy, Arkansas State, the seventh seed. A couple of upsets moving past Northern Colorado and Claremont Colleges. Pleased to be joined by Becky Worley, former USA rugby player. And Becky, some teams, as you know from your playing days, don't like the scrutiny of being the top seed. Not the case for Salisbury. They've lived up to the pressure. One of the few teams that's actually come in ranked or seeded first and made it to the finals. The thing about Salisbury, they are fit buggers and they've all shaved their heads, so they're bald. Pretty impressive. Look for really exciting play from their forwards. Also, really like the play of their 9-10 connection, Bill Beck and Matt Rakowski, two players to watch in this game. Arkansas State has hair, but they have talent <laughs> as well. Its imaginatives come to mind. Fast, powerful, dynamic. Cohesive, another one I'd like to say. They're well coached, a strong group that is somewhat of an underdog today, but look for really exciting, creative play in their back, specifically one player I love watching. Stephen Daly comes from a high school program in Chicago, an artist with the ball. He'll be fun to watch. Two powers on the Division II level square off for the national championship. It's coming up next. This exclusive presentation of the USA Rugby Collegiate Championship on CSTV is brought to you by Bugle Boy, proud sponsor of the 2004 College Championships, and by Nivea for Men, more evolved skin care. A look at Hoover Tower dominating the skyline of Stanford University. We're getting set for Salisbury and Arkansas State. Salisbury from the Eastern Shore in Maryland, hence the Seagulls moniker and a look at their lineup. People we can expect to make an impact here. William Beck, their scrum half, he's known as the mouth of Salisbury rugby. He will be leading this team on the on the field. And uh, we're also looking at Adam Tully, their fly half. That connection should be very important for this Salisbury team as they move forward. Here's how Arkansas State lines up. The Indians expecting big things out of Tommy Parrish. Tommy Parrish, a big hooker, and also it's interesting his uh, prop there, Mariano, little guy. Now for these Indians, also backs, Steve Daly, one to watch. Game time upon us. Arkansas States and Salisbury, two Division II powers in the men's game, both very familiar with postseason intensity and. They've seen each other over the years, and from the outset, we expect physical play for both teams. Both bring some bruising hitters. Introduce our referee, Charlie Hopp, there, setting the stage. Team in white, Arkansas State. We have Salisbury in the black. Little contention from uh, Arkansas State. On the t-shirts for the tournament, it says Arkansas. And I'll tell you what, they did not care for that. Big distinction. That's a big difference. Big distinction. Arkansas State in Jonesboro, in upper portion of the state. Let's run through the rules. 30 players on the field, 15 aside. 80 minutes divided into two 40-minute halves, and you cannot throw the ball forward. No blocking either. That's football. This is rugby. Few ex-football players on the team today as is the case in most collegiate rugby programs. Always good if you can get somebody from the gridiron to come out and lay down those bruising hits. And the kicking game evident too early on. Both teams skilled with their feet. Early on in a game in rugby, you'll see a lot of kicking. They're testing, they're trying to determine who has the good hand and who has the frying pans. 
We'll break it down for you regarding scoring. Five for a try, two more for the conversion kick. You can drop it in for three, a penalty. Results in the opportunity to kick it in for three. Our first line out of the game, with the ball is brought inbounds, if you will. They're, one of the things I'm noticing right away from Salisbury is they're using their flankers, running them into the line, trying to isolate forwards, big boys, running on backs, generally smaller. It's a way to tie in the backs and also hopefully have a size and, and strength advantage for those flankers coming into the line. Stay in, stay in. Chance to play it in. Stay, stay. Stay. You'll notice in rugby we have the referee mic'd up. He's talking to the players throughout the game. It's unique in that he tries to help them avoid infringements. This is a game of interpreting the laws, and the referee tries to help the players to interpret them in the same way that he does. Everybody wants to be in synchronicity regarding the rules. It'll do Salisbury well to get some points on the board early because Arkansas oh, oh. State is an offensive power over the course of this year, putting up scores like 55-7, 69-0 over Louisiana Lafayette. And they blanked UNC Wilmington, 69-0 as well. Oh, you're bringing it down. Salisbury does come right into this tournament rank number one. Arkansas number seven. And I was speaking with Arkansas State coach Kurt Huckabee, and he says, tell you what, these Salisbury kids don't have an ounce of fat on them. Whew. That's us. Ball was coming our way. That was well caught, Brian. Good job. I made a play for it. A look at Dr. Robert Davis. When I spoke with him, he said, call me Bob, and he is a plastic surgeon. So insert whatever obvious joke you want to make about <laughs> rugby players being good clients. Quick setting of the nose right there on the field. A little stitch here, a little stitch there. And looking pretty, too. And you touched on Coach Huckabee. He is a lawyer by trade. So very educated men on the sidelines, the touch line, if you will, in rugby. And uh, Kurt Huckabee's assistant coach, Patrick Stewart, he's a PhD. A lot of testing right here, trying to determine where the holes are, where backs can wiggle through in this defensive line. Usually the first five minutes of a rugby game are a stalemate as each team tries to learn more about each other. As referee Charlie Hopp calls the knock-on, should introduce our refs and touch judges. Referee Hopp is from Denver. Our touch judges are Mark Ward and Tom Coburn. We look at Mr. Huckabee got involved when his son, who proved to be an All-American, said, Dad, I want to play that sport you played when you were younger. Kurtz knows Northern California well. That's where we are on the campus of Stanford University. Played both football and rugby at Sacramento State, the state capital. His eldest son, Matt, was a USA national player. And now his son, Kurt, Junior is number 10 for this team. And he's really a player to watch in this game. He's a younger player, and at fly half, a lot of decision-making that needs to be done. And these are the kind of games that make a fly half, those big games where you're put under a lot of pressure to lead with your brain and your body. Well, it's amazing the passion you rugby folks have for your sport because of the time commitment the players and the coaches make. Speaking with Dr. Davis, he said, that he tries to balance his practice with all the time required for the team. Wound up coaching the club 20 years ago because he went by Salisbury and saw rugby players and said, can I run with you guys? And they said, we need a coach, someone to tell us what a scrum is. The scrum is a reset of play. It's a way to get things going again where there's been a minor infringement. Both teams will engage over the ball and push to try and determine possession. And we'll just listen here as referee Hawk calls the engagement. And you hear that exhale. Let him run. Lots of grunting in there too. Seagulls work it forward, but the tribe as Arkansas State goes by. 
no, recovers, no, and the Indians the claim it momentarily. Our referee yeah. being very forceful in instructions on the field. What we see there is that the Arkansas State player was not releasing the ball. When the player is tackled to the ground, they must release the ball immediately, giving the opposition the ability to pick it up or poach it, as we say, and create a turnover. But if they don't release the ball, it's a penalty, and a penalty may be kicked for three points. And it's Brian Burke set to try it. That's it. That's good. And he's got it. 3-0 early on. Salisbury with the first score. They lead 3-0 in this national championship game. The fans for both teams out on a gorgeous afternoon in the San Francisco Bear. Soaking in some outstanding rugby two years ago. Salisbury beat Arkansas State in Jonesboro. That's where Arkansas State's campus is located in Arkansas in the round of eight. Salisbury also claiming a 1996 national championship before USA Rugby organized this event formally. Four other appearances in the Elite Eight, including last year, and Arkansas State has been just as good in postseason rugby. Arkansas State line out. We should mention this is Division II rugby. And the difference in terms of the divisions in rugby is not about your conference or the size of your school. It's about when your program was started and how you've moved forward. Have you progressed to a higher level of play as determined by your local union? We had a mall there set up off the line out. Second pot of forwards ready to move forward and try and tie some backs in. He's trying to find some good spacing here. Instead, go middle and. Pretty nice collision there in the center of the field. Indians kick it forward, but the Seagulls clam. Well taken in the air, testing under the high ball. How are they handling? The little chips over. Not finding touch. It's a good opportunity for a counterattack for Arkansas State. We see their winger isolating himself. And then just a minor. And Thomas Carlin receiving some instructions. What we saw there was the tackler was trying to play the ball. If he's on his feet, he may play the ball. But when he is horizontal, may not play the ball. No style points there, but this is rugby. This is not beauty school. We're nope. Interested in effective play. We talked about what Arkansas State has Arkansas done. State Let's talk some more about Rugby 101 well, and the touchline. The touchline is also known in other sports as the out-of-bounds line. We say the ball has gone in touch, not out-of-bounds. Or the sideline you hear in many sports. And we'll use the terms interchangeably, knowing that not all the folks watching this are rugby aficionados like yourself. Oh. Good-looking chance here. The groan was worth it. The Tribe going in for the Tribe. Stephen Daly, what a beautiful play. And what he saw was the defense sliding out. One player had come up too fast, another player slow, and that creates a beautiful gap that Daly took. Watch him. You'll see one player in front and one player behind. That creates a gap. He slices through it, fakes the dummy, isolates the fullback, dots it down. Daly's a great story, Brian. He's uh, from Chicago. He played in a high school program and just a really really strong runner and when i spoke with coach huckabee he just said this kid can break a game wide open he knew what he was talking about that was a scouting report i got as well and good to see it was backed up curtis huckabee coach's son traditionally the fly half kicks and he's played through pain broke both of his collarbones in high school but that that's what rugby is all about. Up and good. Arkansas State with a response. They grab the lead. 7-3. And they know all about the intensity of a championship appearance. 2001 national finalists lost to Baylor. At the end of 2002 and 2003, ranked number seven in the nation. And this year, won their fifth straight. Mid-South Conference Championship.
Ball restarted with a drop kick. Arkansas State fields it, looking to get out of their defensive third, the red zone. From behind the 22, you'll often see a kick to touch. Just to gain some field tour territory, get some safety. Move out of our defensive third, play in the middle, play in the front end of the field. Recruitment, such a big part of this game. How do players wind up playing rugby? Let's hear about it. Um, actually, that's kind of a funny story. I was, uh, I went out for my buddy's 21st, 21st birthday party, and I went to this local establishment on the south side called McNally's, and I ran into a kid I knew that he's a backup scrum half on this team, Floyd Padone. And he was telling me about how he goes to Arkansas State, all this, blah, blah, blah. He's like, hey, you should come down. I'm like, yeah, I'll go, no problem. And then, like, the next week, he just kept calling me and calling me. And I was like, I don't even remember saying that. But he was like, yeah, just come down. I'm like, and then the coaches started calling me, and then actually it sounded like a good deal. So I went down, checked the school out, and uh, it, it was really good. I, I fell in love with it, and I'm just happy to be here. I like how Steve got the plug in for the local establishment. And <laughs> of all the things that can happen on one's 21st birthday, Winding up a rugby player, not too bad. I can think of other less educational outcomes. And although scholarships are not that common in rugby, what Arkansas State does is they waive out-of-state tuition for the kids that they bring in from foreign lands. And they've gotten great support from the administration, currently building a couple world-class rugby fields on that campus. This is a school with a very solid rugby tradition. Here's a chance for Salisbury. Never put on sides. Black. Sir? Kick or scrum. When a kick is made, players on the kicker's team must retreat. They cannot just stand and wait. They must retreat. And there we got an offsides call. Release it! From a kicking situation. Wind picking up a bit, and the players will like that because the temperatures have risen throughout I got it. I got our it. day of rugby. I got it. I got it. And it's got to be getting increasingly it. warm no, no. on the field, and most here. specifically in those scrubs. And the tempers are getting a little right, hot under the collar here. You can see Hold. referee Charlie Hopp trying to calm things down. Okay, first of all, I had the penalty on for you for them going over the top, not staying on their feet. Yes, sir. And I had your number nine coming in and throwing a punch. Yes, sir. To the guy. Shut up. To the guy on the ground. Jackie, okay? Come here. Come here. Jackie, come number here. Number nine, come here. Okay? All right. Well, you were the one that got caught. Okay? No, no. Okay? He did. Okay? I don't want any more of it. You know martial arts. Okay? Next time, it's a, it's yes, a yellow card. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Hey. That was terrific stuff. I like the martial arts line. And our thanks to all the good people involved with making that happen and great work by our technical crew as well some of the best in the business working with us today on cstv providing this all access look at rugby just as in other sports in rugby it's the retaliator that always gets caught give it up give it up it was an opportunity there for arkansas state to get a penalty in their favor but the retaliation ended up working against them and you heard Referee Hop warn of a yellow card. In this sport, that means 10 minutes in the sin bin where your team plays down, man down, almost like a power play in hockey. And there is a red card available in some levels of rugby as well, and that's for more severe infractions. Yes. Yellow, let the yellow light slow down, red. You're stopped. You're out of here, buddy. We won't see any of those today. Hopefully. Thinking good thoughts. Nice driving ball from Arkansas State. They're running a short line out where they only have four people in, and then they keep a second pot of forwards back. We've seen this really from both teams trying to maximize their mobile forwards. Salisbury doing a very good job in defensive realignment. And early on in the game, you're going to see that. It's as people get tired, as people get hot, that's when you start to see walking and big holes in the defensive alignment. These are well-rounded athletes bringing skills they pick up in other sports to the rugby pitch, and Mr. Tully reflected on that topic. My other best sport would have to be soccer. Uh, I was a goalkeeper. I had been playing since I was four years old, so uh, I got some great hands, and my kicking was really on point, and goalkeeping really helped with being aggressive. You know, I don't really like to turn down a challenge at all. 
And both teams revealing tenacious play from the beginning. Kept alive as the tribe worked their way down the field. Other sports played, some of the Salisbury guys, baseball, football. And number four, Sean Kelly, he's a lacrosse player who's also the ice hockey goalie. And Salisbury sporting players with military experience. They have some former Marines out there, so do not be surprised if things remain intense on the field. Military programs are so fantastic for rugby in the U.S. They really help us to develop a lot of players. We saw Air Force last year winning both the men's and the women's collegiate championship. It's a Salisbury team that is one of the finest public institutions in their region. Ranked among the top 100 best buys for schools of their size and enrollment. And their coaching staff really thinks they benefit from intelligent players. They have guys who understand all the wrinkles that rugby has to offer. We've seen some calls here for obstruction, which is simplified blocking. It's when a penalty is given against a player who gets in the way of an opponent who's chasing after the ball. So if you step between your player and the defensive tackler who's trying to make that tackle, that's obstruction. Major difference between football and rugby. No blocking. Closing in on the midway mark of the first half. Salisbury scored first. Arkansas State responded with the try and the conversion. Ooh, nice Good block. block there. A little Moment bit ugly. A soccer game. A little ugly and some broken play there. Headgear on the field. Advantage being called we got it. We got to the benefit back here. of Salisbury. Oh, All the kick, you had one guy in front. You're going to have us kick here or a scrum up. Thank you. Back. Thank you. The penalty was called, Outside but referee Huff kick. allowed play to continue because it was to the benefit of the team infringed upon. They said, hey, if you can make something of it, use this opportunity. They didn't. They got stymied. Then he goes back to the spot of the original penalty because he's been playing advantage all along. And here, we see Salisbury up there for the kick. Just like a delayed penalty in hockey. And here is... Brian Burke. He converted earlier. He duplicated. Nope. Why? It remains 7-3 Arkansas State in this national title game. Back at Stanford University on a spectacular afternoon for weather. Ideal conditions for the rugby players, although they probably would prefer a touch less warmth it's getting hotter as this afternoon progresses but not slowing down these fine competitors heat plays into fatigue 80 minutes very few subs there's seven possible subs and once you're off you're off for good so you don't see as much subbing they save it usually for later in the game although i know arkansas state has at least four planned subs Burke got hit pretty hard. His teammates move it along. High tackle called here. You must tackle below the shoulders in rugby. Well, Becky and I do our best to bring you everything you need to know about rugby, but we can't do it all. So you got to go to collegesports.com. All the scores, news, highlights, and analysis, play-by-play -play coverage through the real-time game tracker. Collegesports.com, the number one site for all your college sporting needs. High tackle resulting in the penalty. Kick to touch was the option, and that is a fantastic kick right on the five meter line. Great scoring opportunity for Salisbury. Ideal precision angling towards the corner. When it's a penalty and you kick the ball into touch, you are awarded the line out. And that is to your advantage. You may drive onto it, and I bet that's what we'll see here. Seagulls creeping closer. They got numbers developing. They are using Anthony Magnolia a ton. Obviously, he's perceived of as a very strong runner. And there are some big ones out there. But they have a deft touch because they're passing it very effectively as well. Combining that power with skill. Advantage being played. 
sounded like. Ooh. <laughs> it's a try. Salisbury with the score. That's what we call an up and under kick. Look at Gary Owen, wasn't that? It was just a little chip right over the top. And what we saw is we were matched man for man. So instead of trying to run directly at him, why not kick right over the tops of their head and up and under, see how well they field it or don't. And if you can regain position and dot, possession and dot it down, that's your try. So William Kreese kicked it away and then fought his way down there and put it down. Covering your own ball, kicker's dream. William on the business end and the kicking end. And now the conversion opportunity. Burke can place it whatever distance away he chooses, trying to cut down on that angle. That's a far cry, though, from just on the sideline. Doesn't make it. That's tough geometry. 8-7 yeah. now. The Seagulls of Salisbury out of Maryland with the lead. Teams traveling well. Great place to visit. The scenic surroundings of Stanford University and so much to do just up the road in San Francisco. Priest definitely using his soccer skills. Trapped it there because he didn't feel like he could handle it well off his hands and didn't want to knock it on. If it comes off the foot, it's not a knock on. It, but she goes counter. Going towards the short side of the field. Line side and rugby terminology. Well fielded by Arkansas State. They're having a hard time supporting each other in the counter attack, but they're definitely fielding the high ball well. Neither team worried too much about kicking away possession. They're definitely trying to gain field territory. Could be a kicking duel in the end. Burke showing off that leg he has. Oh! Body on body. And the whistle. Late hit on the kicker. Back and forth, back and forth. This is a timing issue. Released. Ooh. And it was high. So what we'll see here is instead of taking the infraction back at the point where the kick was made. Back to him from here, guys. The penalty is given. Late hit. At the spot where the kick landed. Benefiting the Seagulls try. As they pick up some important field position. And they're going to go for posts. Within range. Take the points where you can. Well, we know that. Burke has a strong leg. Now it comes down to accuracy. Made one, missed one so far. This would be worth three if successful. Nope. Wide. On the left side. And put down by the tribe. In those instances, it's a live ball, so it must be touched down in the end goal area. Then it's brought out to the 22, or in this case, Arkansas State will have to kick the ball. It only has to cross the 22, and then both teams may contest for it up in the air. Or you can drill it down and just try and gain a little field, field territory. This is really a kicking duel. It's very interesting. Well, when we talked with the Salisbury coaching staff, they did say that that was a strength of their game from the Arkansas State point of view. Tommy Harris is a big individual at 220. Tommy, what's it like to be a big hooker? Well, I started off as a prop my first year of playing, and uh, 
got pretty familiar with the scrum, played all around it. And, uh, I got moved to hooker. We have uh, another hooker on our team from Argentina who helped me out a lot, taught me pretty much everything I need to know. And I think it's an advantage being bigger than the other hookers because longer legs so I could get a better strike on the ball. And with that large frame, able to use his stature to try to gain an advantage. Player hurts. We're trying to shake it off. This is a shoulder injury. You know the second that they're holding their arm in that bent position that it's shoulder. And that's what we got here from number eight from Arkansas to Michael Hurd. And we'll come back with more of this championship game in just one moment. We're on the campus of Stanford University in Stanford, California. Division II Men's Collegiate Rugby Championship. Ryan Weber, Becky Worley, Mindy Bach on the sidelines with you. It is Salisbury in the dark uniforms and Arkansas State in the whites. Salisbury out of Maryland on top, 8-7. Michael Hurd here just getting hurt, shoulder injury there. Going in for the tackle, makes a wonderful tackle, but usually it's contact with the ground that causes these types of shoulder injuries, and that's what we saw there. As he and the tackled player came down, the force of that crunched his shoulder right up. And we have a penalty also that was called just prior to that injury. Basically, it was Salisbury holding onto the ball in the tackle, not releasing. And that allows Arkansas State to kick for touch. And then it's their line out to the point where the ball crosses the touch line. Very dynamic line out play from Arkansas State. They're running what we used to call a piggy, which basically means you're running your big prop inside very close to the five meter line. Dancing down that touch line. The ball must go five meters in at least. Once a ruck is formed, you cannot use your hands. Only the scrum half can dig the ball out with his hands once that ruck has been formed, Brian. And the other key term there, maul. Maul is the difference in terms of if the player is still on his feet or on the ground. A maul is when a player goes into contact but is not tackled to the ground. He retains his feet. Players join from both sides and push down the field. The rock is when the player actually goes to the ground. In sports, there's a special reverence for those who keep the field in great shape. George Toma, the name you know in the pro game. Mindy has a guru in college sports. Mindy? Yes, well, his name is Freddy Pinozo. He's been the head groundskeeper here at Stanford for 23 years. And all of the games during this tournament are played on one field. It's just amazing. And Mr. Pinozo, everybody, all the players say how wonderful this field is. How many hours do you spend just getting it ready? Uh, when we start this field, we we working eight hours uh, every day. But sometimes when they have a big event, we have to make some overtime. So even when they're not playing on here, you're still working on it to keep it in good condition? Yes, we do. And it's a lot of work, but we have to do it. Too. How many men are on your crew to keep this grass so perfect? Uh, we have only four, first, uh, four people to, to maintain all these fields. Oh my gosh, four people. Well, they've done a fabulous job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Becky, Brian? Thank you, men. And this field in immaculate condition, holding up the third championship game being played today. And the field looks terrific. Scoring chance here. The Tribe over. This Arkansas is, State with another try. This is an incredibly fast field, Brian. And as Mindy was talking, we saw Jack Turner, their scrum half, use his speed by taking a quick tap, going almost over the line, and then watching as his big forward, number five, Patrick Hurrall, carried it over for him. So Patrick with the score. He is a decorated player, Mid-South All-Stars, two years. And we seem to be having a good time with the element of injuries in this sport. He's a nursing major. <laughs> so Pat able to stitch himself up or bandage, whatever is the case, started playing because he and his brother had been interested in the sports from their childhood days, watching it on TV. And 
finally had a chance to find out what it's like on the field. Curtis Huckabee for the conversion. There's all kinds of different tees that are used in kicking. Sometimes guys will bring some sand out and make a mound. Other times they'll just kick off a very small pylon. I kick off of a cutoff cone, and that's more like what Kurt Huckabee is using. It's just a normal orange cone that you would use. You cut the top off, and it gives you a little extra height. This one continues to swing back and forth. Patrick Harrell making it 12-8, Arkansas State. Pat also maintaining a 4.0 GPA. You see the smooth look for Salisbury as a team. They shaved their heads a couple weeks back, and when you're that age, it grows back in. I also love their, their mouth guards, the ones that look like you're missing a few teeth to begin with. That's a nice touch. <laughs> I didn't want to comment on it because I didn't know if for some of the fellas they were dentically uh, challenged. Yeah, you can be in this game, but the mouth guards are definitely a good call. We anticipated an even matchup, and oh, this championship play. has lived up to that expectation. 12 8. Indians with the lead and possession as we approach the eight minute mark of the first half. Love the little touches on the ball from Stephen Daly. Just then we saw him go into contact and give a behind the back pass to one of his players. Just trying to play continuously, open, wide game, little flair. And this is an, opp ooh, an opportunity lost. We really had an opportunity for Arkansas State there. They had four players out wide and they were all backs. And then we saw Salisbury had forwards there that were all kind of bees to the honey bunch. Opportunity lost. Now, I want to point something out in the scrum. If you look at one of the props for Arkansas State, Mariano Blanche, he weighs 150 pounds. As a prop. Up you come, up you come, lads, up you come, up you come. In his stat sheet, they listed it. Oh, one, anywhere between, I've seen a couple places, 170, one place, 180. His coach told me he's a peanut. He looks lean to me. He's a little baby thing. Well, he has international experience, native of Argentina, been playing since he was seven years of age, and won a 2001 national championship for the Argentine squad. And if you look at him there, number one, he's the one, he's the little guy, and his prop, I mean, his hooker is much larger than he is. That's not normal. In rugby, normally your props are your biggins and your hookers are your little ones. Curtis Huckabee told me he's a busy guy, coaching rugby and a country lawyer, to use his words, and he's with Mindy Buck. With the head coach, Kurt Huckabee of Arkansas State, winding up the first half pretty soon, kind of what was your strategy coming in here? What did you want your men to accomplish? Just do the same game plan that we've, that's got us here, and uh, Salisbury's pretty tough, and it's, uh, it's hard to uh, stick with your game plan when you've got a team that good on the other side. And when you say game plan, what are some of the keys though, for your players that they excel at? Well, we like to get the ball out wide. That's, that's the important thing, and we're just not able to get that at this point. So, excuse me. Just... Thank you. All right, let's go back to you, Brian. Appreciate it. Obviously, Mr. Huckabee trying to coach a game as well. We appreciate his allowing us in that conversation. And as you heard, a very congenial man. He told me that when he came back to rugby, he thought the try was still worth four. <laughs> so when the fellas ran it, he said, all right, guys, we got four. And they looked at him and said, coach, it's five, it's five. now, and that's evolved as <laughs> this game has matured. You know, one of the things at Arkansas State is they're putting, they're putting their football's the not fantastic, their basketball's not great, but they've had a lot of success in rugby, and that has really helped the school to get behind this club. Dr. Wyatt, Let's who heads Wyatt. up the Let's school, has been supportive financially and really giving the team the wherewithal to go forward and get them here. You don't see that in every sport. Fellow with a bandage. Back on the field. Hot look, hot look. It is a unique breed of individual who finds their way onto a rugby field. These are intense athletes willing to pay the physical price. Arkansas State leading Salisbury 12-8 in this Division II National Championship game. And that was Jason Leak we saw with the attractive headdress. He's come in to play number eight. It's a badge of honor in your sport. That's right. 
because there are no rolling subs in this game, people will patch it up and play. Tribe trying to develop something offensively. Arkansas scrambling to get back and support their player. Oh. Driving tackle in the middle of the field. That's a level three tackle where the player is pushed backwards. One of the terms you'll hear us use every once in a while, the mall. That's when a player is going into contact, keeps his feet, and the players will combine around him. The other term that's similar is when there's contact, a player is tackled to the ground, and then it's a ruck. Sniping around the base of the breakdown. Salisbury's trying to make something of this open play. Good fake or dummy to use your rugby parlance. Arkansas State a little bit on the back foot here, trying to regain a little bit of structure as they try and defend against Salisbury here. Turnover helps them out, see if they can make something of it. And the man with the bandage brought back down. Chance developing for the Seagulls. Ooh, great tackle. Jarring hits. Slows things down. Number seven, Carl McPhail, just stopped that play dead in its tracks. Salisbury goes the other direction. Matt Rukowski driving towards the post. No, you lost the forward in the tackle, Black. You can hear referee Charlie Hopp. Easy, guys. Easy. Making his comments to the team, helping them not to help him referee. Well, the player's just being generous. He's going over to his touch judge right now. What, what, the touch judge has radioed into his ear that he's seen something. Okay. Yeah, knock on going for it. Yes, we do. Okay, it's white ball, five meters out. Conferring with his touch judge, Captain's making sure place. that what was seen and called was correct. The touch judges Captain's and the referee Captain's. all wear microphones and uh, radios so that they can talk to each other. Okay, well, what are we doing? We're going to play a knock on by Black going in, okay? <laughs> Unfortunately, neither I nor my test judge saw what was happening, okay? All right. Okay. I don't know, need it. Let's, it's been a great, clean game so far. Yes, sir. You clean your boys up, yes, sir. okay? No retaliation. I've got it, okay? No, all right. Yeah. Okay, we set scrum here to white, all right? Yes, sir. Clean them up. Hey, boys, come here. I really like our officials' relaxed homespun sensibility, keeping things very. Relaxed on the field in what is an intense battle for a national championship. This game's so physical that it's really important for the referee to keep the game under control. Any niggle on the side, any little extra something, it doesn't help. It really escalates things because there's so much contact already. So it's important for a referee to nip those things in the bud. On the put in there, referee Hopp is calling a collapse. Salisbury is saying, hey, but we spun him 90. And that's one of the rules with the scrum. If the scrum moves 90 degrees, so that it moves from being oriented northwest, excuse me, north-south to east-west, then there's a change in possession. No, up tunnel, still white. Another whistle. If it comes directly out of the tunnel, right when it's put in, let's say the hooker accidentally toes it and it goes right out the tunnel in which it came, then we have a re-scrum. No, it's not rugby. Some politicking on the field. I believe it is rugby technically, but probably not legal rugby play is mm -hmm. the argument. Mm -hmm. They engage. Another whistle. Shut up. Keep your feet back. Keep your feet back. Come on. Controlling the scrum is very important, and it's the job on, of the referee to make sure that the engagement we'll goes cleanly and fairly. I don't think you want to. The props positioning is very important. Where do you put your arm on the other player? How is their how are their shoulders? Are they square? Is one down? The stability of the scrum is dependent upon the positioning. You can see he's calling foot up. That's on the hooker. Hooker cannot put their foot up before the ball goes in. Salisbury still looking to get it over for the try. They're close. And they're in. 
A try for the Seagulls. Matt Rakowski bringing it over. Taken off of the tap. Ball spun out, given in a flick to number 10, Matt Rakowski, who all he needs to do is get across the try line and, try line and apply downward pressure to the ball as he is in the in goal area. It's interesting, you'll notice that the uh, players for Salisbury are not, especially in the backs, they're not necessarily keeping to their positions. Number 12, William Kreese will step into the 10 position often and allow number 10, Matt Rakowski, to go out to center. Burke's kick is true. He's pumped up, deservedly so. 15-12 now, Salisbury with the lead. Three-point lead for the top-seeded Seagulls. Play restarts via the kick. Off the post. Ball goes into touch. There'll be a line out to Arkansas State right there. Again, the short line out. We haven't seen many full line outs here. Arkansas State favoring the four man line out. Give them an opportunity, they feel, to drive on Salisbury and get that second pod ready to take the ball into contact on the fringe of the breakdown. Faked for the kick. Stephen Daly again. This guy's a little bit of a magician. We're in extra time, injury time if you prefer. Nothing but zeros on our clock, but the official time being kept on the field. That ball does not make touch, but well chased down by Salisbury. Very strong reliance on the kick, both up and unders, clearing kicks, and there we saw a grubber where it just tapped through on the ground as a way to get past a defender. Goals booted downfield. And that's the end of the first half. Let's check in with Mindy on the field. Mindy? All right, we've got the Salisbury head coach. Very tight first half, just what you want it to be. But what would you like your men to do to open it up in the second half? Same thing. Just wide open game. Plenty of kick and bring it to play in the ball. And they're into the field and playing real strong defense. It's is, the only thing we can do. Is Arkansas State how you thought they would be? Is well, it, we and, played them before. We watched them at, uh, in Nashville. We knew they were going to be real tough. Okay, thank you so much. Good luck to you in the second half. Brian? Thanks very much, Mindy. Terrific first half of national championship rugby at Salisbury on top of Arkansas State. 15-12 here on CSTV. Halftime at Stanford. Salisbury leading Arkansas State by three. Brian Weber, Becky Worley back with you on CSTV. Becky coming in. We expected this one to be tight. It's lived up to the billing. Both teams using the kicking game effectively and both shining defensively. It really has been a kicking duel, evenly matched. We've seen a lot of athleticism, and these teams are both very fit. Fitness will come into play on a hot day like today in the next 40 minutes. And the highlights should back that up. Highlights brought to you by Bugle Boy, a proud sponsor of the 2004 USA Rugby Collegiate Championships. We start with Arkansas State. We see Stephen Daly here throwing one dummy, shredding the defense, throwing another one to get past the fullback. He's going to take it in his health for the first try. Kid is really an artist out there. Another artist, we've got William Priest from Salisbury who puts the pop kick up and grabs it himself, puts it down for five. And here we've got the big boy, Patrick Corral. He goes over the line, some hard yards. And here a quick tap from Salisbury. We see number 10, Matt Rakowski, going in. Putting the ball down, it's been a very even game, a fun one to watch. Conditioning could be a factor on this warm afternoon in Northern California. The more athletic team may walk away with a national championship on CSTV. They never get traded. They never go on strike. It's not about money. It's about passion. 
College Sports Television. All college sports, all the time. Finally, a network that brings you the sights, sounds, and excitement of college sports. 24 hours a day. CSTV. Because college sports are just better. We're back for the start of the second half. And Salisbury takes that three-point edge into the final 40 minutes. I'll tell you what, this game has surprised me. I didn't expect so much of a kicking duel. I expected kind of smash em up rugby where you're playing 10-man rugby and bringing your big boys right around the breakdown. But really interesting finesse play with the kick. I think that's one of the elements that makes this sport so creative and so different from just about every other sport. You can see overlaps between other forms of competition, but rugby has so many distinct elements to it. Now that player just called a mark, which is when in his 22, defensive 22, he can call a mark, which means he may not be tackled by the opposing team. And he then gets a kick to start the game up again. Analogous like to a fair, fair catch. You beat me to the football analogy. Yeah, I kind of like that. First half numbers, even in penalties, just about even in scrums, even in lineouts. And free kicks, the 1 0 goals edge, all indicating just how square things were in a level first half, other than a three point difference on the scoreboard. Trying to roll it forward by the Indians, but thwarted in that attempt. Ball comes free. Tribe retains possession. A couple of subs going on here, Brian. Basically what we got in the backs for Arkansas State, Matt Davis is off, number 22, Askey is on. In the forward, this is very typical, we'll see the props switched out. Props normally hard for them to go 80 minutes. So what we got is we've got Mariano Balance out, Brandon Chunway, number 16 on, Brandon Beavers, number three off, and Lee Stanback, number 17 on. Uninitiated, loose head, tight head props lined up alongside the hooker. I never remember which one's one and which one's three. I have think loose head is left of the hooker, and three is tight head is right of the hooker, but you know this stuff far better than I do. I'm just faking it. Those forwards, they do things that we backs try not to pay attention to. And our terrific production staff validates what we said. Cut your holes! Engage! Scrum here to Salisbury. You'll notice they pop the ball on the top of the hooker's hand to indicate when it's going in. That's a communication technique used between the scrum half and the hooker so that he doesn't put his foot up too early. Quiet, quiet. Come into the, in that flanker eight-man pocket. So long as you stay behind the ball. Right. Let's go. Scrum is engaging. Number 17, come here. Uh oh, somebody's in trouble. You got to come in straight. Come in straight and get your binds up immediately. Back 10. It's very technical in the scrum how the props can actually place their feet, place their arms on the opposing props. Their shoulders have to be square and their binds have to be just so. If they bind onto the opposing team in a way that could bring the scrum down, it's deemed dangerous and that's a penalty. Football and rugby share so much in common. Football grew out of rugby when the forward pass was allowed. Turn of the 20th century. They are testing this Arkansas State back three. They're kicking, kicking, kicking. Again, a mark called here. So that each one, the team can restart the play from the mark. Arkansas State. Mm. Knocked forward by Arkansas State. This is Salisbury opportunity to make something out of this. Deep in the other end of the field with a prime scoring chance. Oh, easy guys, back here, not enough an advantage. Knock on my whites, come back. A little bit messy, you can see how this handling really affects the 
flow of the game. We have a couple of drop balls, and then we got to have some more scrums. Well, you talked about what rugby means to Arkansas State. Salisbury more successful in other sports, a national championship, winning four lacrosse titles and victorious in both field hockey and lacrosse a year ago. And they want to claim a rugby national championship. Enhancing those chances with the try. Phil Beck punches it in. Really nice move off the base of the scrum. Beck sensing an opportunity, seeing that the backs for Arkansas State were a little bit wide. So he just picks up and slices up the corner, takes on their fly half, runs him over. He's in for five. The drive for five. <laughs> For Bill, making the drive down from New Jersey to Salisbury, about two hours south of the D.C. Baltimore area, and the scoreboard now reads 2012, pending the conversion. And Burke set the kick. Now we talked about fitness. Kick is good there for two, but that is going to really start playing in on this hot day. Salisbury, very, very fit. It's going to be interesting to see how they are able to exploit little weaknesses in the Arkansas State team as they get hot and they get tired. You might be wondering, why would any team want to wear black on a hot day like this? But as you know, Becky Black, such a significant color in rugby history. The All Blacks from Kiwi Land. We went to the New York Yankees of rugby, that powerhouse New Zealand squad. Rugby jerseys are experiencing their own technical innovation. They've got wicking jerseys now that are light. So even a black jersey can be light if it's the right material. That cotton, though, whoo, hot, sticky. Salisbury advancing, Arkansas trying to correctly set the line, the off offsides line. Very important element of rugby, determining where the defense lines up. Beautiful running from Arkansas State. In moves, effectively done. Number 15, Jarvis Albury, making some ground. Turning on the Jets. Line of scrimmage. We talked about the overlap between rugby and football. Let's talk about the comparisons. The line of scrimmage in football right down the center. The center snaps the ball from there. And in rugby, the scrum comes together the last foot is the offside line for each side as the defense tries to set up and stay on sides. Don't have an infraction. Okay. Sorry. Get a great look at how these teams line up. To Watch how Salisbury puts the ball in. You're going to see their scrum half tap the hand of the shoulder here. And that's how he signals tap, ball's coming in. It's a timing issue between the hooker and the scrum half so that the hooker knows when to hook. Again the you kick. You seem stupefied by the kicking in this one. It's, it's outrageous how much kicking is going on. And so far it hasn't proved a bad tactic for Salisbury. Well, we've seen a series of kicks on this sequence. Kicked. That is a very dangerous, dangerous kick. Dangerous, I was about to finish that thought. Because that just put the ball right into play in the center of Salisbury's offensive area. Many, many options. And now they have numbers out wide. He swings it, taps, Bloom retains, goes middle. Stephen Daly playing a dangerous but possibly wise line of defense. He knew he was outnumbered out wide, so might as well go for the interception. He's trying again, and this time he's going to get burned. Freel. And the score. An interesting decision. Stephen Daly knew that he was man down in both of those instances. The first time he went for the interception or the knock, it proved okay. It put a lot of pressure on the player. But this time, you're going to see him come up, and that allows this ball to go out wide. You see it from a little farther back. You'll see the defensive, aggressive defensive move that left number 14 for Salisbury, Barrett Friel, out there wide, ready. Got it down in the corner. Helping the lead 27-12 now. A terrific start in the second half for Salisbury. We retained a three-point edge at the break. Tough angle right here. And 
Burke, a touch confined by the fencing. Can't get a running start from that vantage. Where the ball is touched down in the in goal area, laterally. Terrifically done. Is where the kick is taken. So when it's wide, you gotta make that. And beautiful, beautiful kick. 29-12. What was a very tight game in the first half is transforming itself into a Salisbury rugby clinic in the second half. 29-12 now, Seagulls, but Arkansas State has rallied throughout this year. Still, they've not faced many deficits of this margin. You know, for those of you who are new to rugby, you may think, oh, these guys are just running around. But there is a strategy here, and it's involving kicking for Salisbury. And there's a strategy to get players to play this sport, recruiting a big factor. And now the Indians needing to put something together offensively, if not a score. Regain some momentum and doing well here. Ooh, that's a big level three tackle. Up, back, down. And what you saw there was Stephen Dealing running side to side. Someone knifing through. That helped out. Bill Beck is a salesman. Billy, how do you get guys to play rugby? It's one of the main jobs to keep a, a program running. We've had a program at Salisbury that's been going now for, for several years. We've gone to uh, the Elite Eights and Final Fours for the past the three or the four years. So that's one of the reasons that we are able to recruit because we're successful. But uh, that's one of the main jobs. We go out and the new guys, when they come out, we force them. We, we, we put pressure on everybody to go out and recruit. It's a job because we don't get recruiting from other coaches or from the school. We don't get much help. So we have to go out and do our own job. And it just uh, helps out. You know, it's, it's hard. So these young folks play a bruising sport. They go to school, they're involved in fundraising, and they also have to go out and shake hands trying to keep this legacy going on. And for both schools, proud rugby traditions. You know, when we talk about the kicking game, it's very interesting because Salisbury has made an obvious coaching decision. They're all on the same page. We're gonna kick, we're gonna kick, we're gonna chase. Arkansas State is kicking a little bit more haphazardly, and so they don't have the same chasers going down to support those kicks. That's really a fundamental difference in the kicking game for these two teams. Fitness also, Salisbury's really showing up right now. Well, when you played, how well-versed were you with your feet? I still play. And I, I, I meant on the college level. You're not 18. Oh, oh. I know you're still claiming to be in your late teens, but <laughs> those days seem and to I be a few years way, ago. Darling. You look fabulous. You know, the kicking game in, in the women's college game is usually not as advanced. Uh, as you move into club play, it's more so. But I am very impressed today with the strategic kicking going on. And that's a great adjective. It really has been well-timed and well-executed kicks, setting up a myriad of scoring chances that Salisbury has been more capable of converting. Power game evident here. And now they swing it wide. Hit, breaks that up, and now a chance for the Seagulls. Carlin, does he have the speed? Yes, he does. Centering the kick now, centering the try so it's easier for his kicker. Defense leads to offense for Salisbury. Quick turnover, Thomas Carlin capitalizes, using those long legs to go the distance. You can see an or a nicely set up play from Arkansas State, but it bounces off the player and gives a perfect little bounce up for Carlin. Turns on the Jets, hits the corner, turns the corner in the in goal area, centers the try so that his kicker will be able to take that kick from directly in front of the posts. Worth a hug of congratulations. And as you indicated, Placed it ideally, making it a straightforward attempt for Burke, who has showed off a booming leg when needed. This one more, matter of fact. And it continues to be a second half. That is all Salisbury. Now on top, 36-12. Uh, 
And the duck. Looks like the precision of this effort. Like a well-placed scalpel. With this kind of route, I think it's like a exquisite rhinoplasty. <laughs> Excellent word power. Well, he's a plastic surgeon. I got the reference. <laughs> you got to remember, with the 500 channel universe, folks are dialing in and dialing out. If you weren't with us earlier, the doctor is a skilled plastic surgeon. Deviated septums are his life. <laughs> Let's check in with Mindy. She's got a member of the rugby press alongside. Well, Ed Haggerty has been involved in this sport for more than 30 years, and he should know more than just about everybody because he's also the publisher of Rugby Magazine. And what is the biggest growth that you've seen in this sport? You said it's just in the past few years. Why is that? Well, it, it's been growing pretty well, pretty steadily, but in the last couple of years, we, you know, in the past two years, we've gained 241 clubs, uh, 140 in 2003, and another 101 this year. Uh, a lot of the growth is coming with the kids' game. Uh, guys my age and a little bit younger have children. This is the sport they want them to play. So the, the, the parents become coaches and referees, and uh, they they start leagues. And that's what's happening. And it's an attractive game to begin with. It's a big world game. This is the second year that this tournament has been played at Stanford on this facility. Some people say that it's one of the best in the world. How have you seen it benefit the sport? Well, you know, most of our games are played in public parks. I mean, and this is kind of like a turn of the century sport. It's all about playing. And, you know, we, we will play wherever we have to play, sometimes with uh, uh, pitcher's mounds in the middle of the field. And to come out to a, a facility like this is, is it, you know, it, it gives it justification. It really makes it seem like a, a mainstream, a, a, a big deal. Uh, the players are really enthusiastic to be, you know, to have the opportunity to play in a facility like this with lock, great locker rooms and, a, and an absolutely superb field. Yeah, well, some of the players earlier were actually rolling on the grass. This is just amazing that there are actually no divots in it, even after all the games that have been played here. All right, Ed Haggerty, thanks so much for your time. Let's go back to you, Brian and Becky. Thank you, Mindy. And you might want to lay down on that fine grass. Mindy has been running around doing a terrific job for us on the sidelines on what is a warm afternoon, even if you are wearing the makeup. Well, from my subscription to Rugby Magazine, I gleam that rugby has a great Olympic tradition. Some talk about the sport returning down the road, but rugby came into second modern Olympiad in 1900 and last played in 1924 in Paris and the United States. Won that gold. We were reigning champions. It was a while back. And we see the camaraderie. That Salisbury team. I thought you'd start chanting USA with the <laughs> jingoism. Now Arkansas State has to get something going offensively because they have watched Salisbury raise their play in the second half and grab a commanding 36-12 lead just about halfway through the second half. Arkansas State looking to kick into touch, but take a second to regroup. A minute is given as the term that's used when a player is down. And you heard wind knocked out of him. We're coming back. This exclusive presentation of the USA Rugby Collegiate Championship on CSTV is brought to you by Nivea for Men, more evolved skin care. Injury situation still being attended to. As bumps and bruises piling up for both teams and a long afternoon gets a touch longer for the Indians of Arkansas State. A breather, much appreciated, no doubt for these kids. There are stoppages of play when there's an infraction or a penalty. You'll have a scrum, you'll have a line out. There's a second or two to regain, but there's no official timeout. Really only minutes given by the referee at his discretion so players can pull it together, come back. A look at Jack Turner. Staying in state for school, the native of Arkansas. Well, so much speculation about the future of rugby, and as someone who feels passionately about the sport as you do, I'm sure you'd like to see it become a full-fledged NCAA sport. And 
There's a variety of factors at play, and one of the biggest is Title IX, that you have to have gender equity, and it's not necessarily the relevance of a sport or the dynamic play. It comes down to head count and scholarships making it more difficult for a sport like rugby to move into that category. Interestingly enough, though, rugby is a very popular game amongst the women, so mm -hmm. it's uh, something we'd like to see develop in colleges all across the country. We'd like to see it in the Pan Am Games. That's a possibility. And, of course, back in the Olympics, even if it's sevens, which is a fantastic spectator sport, where we only have seven players per team instead of the 15 you're seeing here today. And promise it appeared towards the line, but Salisbury there defensively still. The Indians fighting forward with the ball. Arkansas State just running sideways at this point, struggling. And a clever kick out, creates some space. Another sharp tackle. Harland scored just a few minutes ago, now doing it defensively. Taking it on the short side, smart of Arkansas State. They saw they had a few more men there. Now they're using their, their big players, try and drive forward because Salisbury is doing an excellent job re-establishing re themselves. Black, you're coming from the wrong side in the tackle. This is really a fitness issue. It's hard to get back and come through the gate at the back of the ruck, at the back of the breakdown. You cannot enter a breakdown from the side, only from directly behind. Possession remains intact. Then turned over and kicked downfield. Another whistle. Knock here, knock here, not advantage. And the player down as well, along with the infraction. You'll notice in that last series of play as Arkansas State tried to send the ball out, it was two Arkansas State offensive players against a wall. Maybe nine, ten Salisbury players realigning defensively, not overcommitting to the breakdown. That's a fitness issue. And in terms of NCAA sanctioning of the sport, women's rugby on the watch list, the official emerging sports list, furnished by the folks who govern most of college sports. This championship being put on by USA Rugby, and they've done a marvelous job. Terrific venue side and great administrative support. Salisbury just seems so much more mature to me. I'm not sure if it's the bald heads, or maybe they're just bigger but they just seem to be more organized, more aware of the game. And they also have some folks seasoned in life. Patrick yeah. McGrath served in the Middle East after 9-11. Matt Wachowski, member of the U.S. Marine Corps. And while Arkansas State also has some decorated military people as well, you do, I think, get the sense that Salisbury at least playing on the field with more rugby maturity. It's the bald heads. <laughs> Nice try. <laughs> Works for Bruce Willis, good enough for you, huh? Well, it did wonders for Andre Agassi in tennis. He dialed it down and he can't lose. I'm going to hold on to my hair as long as I can. I'll tell you what, Arkansas State may be tired, but they're doing really well contesting in the scrum. You can see them pushing Salisbury back. It's a referee, but not going by Black first. Scrum white. Yeah, it's cool in rugby with the referee, Mike. The job doing color is a lot easier. I mean, he's doing half my I job. I was going to go get a sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, I'm not doing much play-by-play. -play, so if we can move this work along. And again, thanks so much to our dynamic audio folks. I really hope you've enjoyed this inside look at the game type of coverage you can only get on CSTV. What's the shot you Oh, it's a, it's a rifle about that big long. <laughs> Random <laughs> conversations Normally happening in the... No, it's the congeniality of the game Jim's and for uh, more of the unique things that you can only find through this fine network, check out our website, all the scores, news, highlights, and live play-by-play -play via the real-time game tracker. CollegeSports.com, the number one site for all your college oh. sporting needs. And you're breathless as this one develops. Beautiful play, setting up a winger on the outside, committing the defender inside and using those fresh wheels to go dot down that sideline and unfortunately push the touch. You know, we were listening to that conversation with the referee in the front row and 
rugby, the tradition is to socialize after the game, and referees usually come in many instances. And you don't see that in many sports when refs are often chased out of the building. <laughs> I did notice that in yesterday's semifinal action that some folks enjoying a beverage or two. The referees among them. Jason Bloom plays the hooker position well, and he talked to us about what it takes to be a good hooker. Well, the first thing I do, I, I kind of make the football reference because that a lot of people know how football is. A hooker is kind of like the center in the sense that in a scrum down, it's your job to get that ball back to the, uh, to the scrum half so he can get his job done. Um, you, got, you let them know that it's a pretty powerful position, that it's a lot of leadership in that role. Um, then they kind of respect it. You know, it's got a silly name, but that's the name it's given, and you just go out there and do your job. <laughs> well said. It's easier for the boys explaining it than the girls. I'm not know. touching that one at all. <laughs> wise man, wise man. Time evaporating, and that is not good from the Arkansas State perspective facing the 36-12 Salisbury lead in this Division II Men's Rugby Championship. That went straight into touch. Kick from in front of the 22, so it'll go from the spot where it was kicked. Got to back up your squad. Reason to be feeling good. Back in the Seagulls. So named because their campus on the Eastern Shore. Enjoy great summer weather in Salisbury, Maryland. There's, there was a little obstruction there, but we had a previous infraction, which was in the mall. Players on their feet. That's part of the definition of the mall. They may not be brought to ground by the opposing team. Basically, they can't be tackled in the mall. And when that happens, it's called pulling down the mall. A penalty is awarded. Indians. It's interesting. Now, it in. now they're going to the full lineout. Previously, they've used the short lineout all game long, meaning only four players in, and now they've got their whole complement in, but they're running a fairly elaborate move. And. Finish your thought. <laughs> they score the try. It's over for the try. These set, set pieces are a good opportunity to run some tricky plays. Plays that give you an opportunity to really run some dummy plays and allow you to commit defenders in the wrong place. So you'll see it's a full line out. It's brought down. A second mall is set up. They drive over the line. All they got to do is put the ball to the ground. They're in the in goal area. The ball need only touch the ground. Crossing the plane isn't good enough. It's a little tough to see in that melee of bodies who actually put it down. I know Tommy Parrish was in the neighborhood. There you go. It's a team game. And yeah. The most important aspect is, is more points for the Indians trying to get some more. And shorts. But Arkansas State back at the scoreboard down 36 17. Still time for Arkansas State to mount this rally, but they need to continue what they just did moments ago, and that is get into the try zone. 36-17, Salisbury with the lead. Arkansas straight pounding forward, trying to wear these guys down on the inside. They haven't had much luck going outside, so it's tough. They're trying to use their big boys to make some ground around the breakdown. Not having much luck. But just from a confidence standpoint, obviously a boost to the morale of the Indians to get back on the scoreboard. Maybe day late and dollar short. 
But the cool see, thing about rugby, to work with, though. yeah, and you know, this is what's great about rugby is in a contact sport that's as intense as this, you just can't lay down. You go till the end, and you can see these kids. They have a lot of pride in what they do, and they're fighting to the end. What a great day to watch rugby. Crowds growing. People learning how to watch this game. Some folks here for all four games. This is the third you all right? national championship game. And <laughs> it's physical for everybody. Brian Weber, Becky Worley, Mindy Bach with you. It is the Division II national championship of rugby. We mentioned this earlier, the reason it's Division II, not because the school's smaller, not because of the conference, it's because it's an emerging sport at that particular school, and they can try and move up, but it's up to the local area union to determine who's ready and when. Kind of like uh, Premier League football in the UK. Soccer, if you will. Clever kick ahead, but the goals get there first. Oh, Lord. That doesn't sound good. And run! Unlike arena football, if the ball goes in the stands, you do not get to keep it. <laughs> and I'm thinking number six, Anthony Magnolia is going to owe his buddy Brian Burke number 15 something. Because he put him under a world of pressure there. Short line out again. Usually the hooker throws the ball in. That's customary. Doesn't have to, but usually does. Elaborate moving around. And again, the driving mall working for Arkansas State. They're trying to go with what's working for them. Small pods of forward advancing. And then they have that secondary pod out ready to move forward. It is amazing to watch the parody on those lineout moves as players melding together to get in the air try to grab the ball you haven't always been able to lift your own players that's a fairly recent iteration in the past you just had to jump it wasn't quite as acrobatic looking kick is still in bounds counter opportunity for arkansas state but really well covered by salisbury they're just doing such a good job of flooding their players down to cover all these kicks. They're all on the same page. They know they're going to kick and kick and kick and kick. This is a three on one. And those numbers don't add up. Oh, one on three. One with the ball and three without. That's usually the result of a one on three. Unsupported, the Arkansas State player could not release the ball because Salisbury would have just picked it up and gone in for a score. In that case, he actually made the right decision. Better to give up three than five or potentially seven. Going for points, number 15. Brian Burke has been very good all day, and I jinxed him. That is the broadcaster's curse. Ah, but. Not so fast. <laughs> a try. Oh, that's a heartbreaker, heartbreaker. So when a penalty is awarded and they kick for post, it's a live ball. That ball can be played in any way, shape, or form. So Brian Burke misses. Arkansas State thinks, eh, it's going out of bounds, but this is a funny little ball. It bounced right back in and was covered beautifully by number four. Sean Kelly with the hustle for the points. That's a heartbreaker. You can see this Arkansas State team trying to come together underneath the post, trying to pull it together. Mental error. Comes when you're tired, comes when you're down. Salisbury cruising now in the national title game. Kick gets us back in play, and it's kicked the other direction. That's just shocking. Salisbury's kicking. <laughs> I see a trend developing in this one. <laughs> it's not tough to be an analyst when it's 
Maybe we'll kick, maybe we'll kick, maybe we'll kick. Arkansas State trying to recover from the mental error that caused the previous try. Salisbury, though, just rolling. They are very disciplined in their defense. You'll see they only commit one or two to the defensive ruck. Offsides is called against Salisbury. They did not retreat, uh, retreat 10 when a penalty is called. The team that has aired, infringed, if you will, must retreat 10 meters. If they don't, another 10 are tacked on. And Arkansas State trying to make touch so that they could have the line out down there, but didn't quite clear. Field goal by Salisbury. Wing on wing. Look at the wheels. Lost it though. After that impressive display of speed. Ben Edelman. This has been a game back full of big hits. Covering clear, a late tick, a late hit on the kicker. Again, Salisbury covering in defense, double tackling. And that's a beautiful level three tackle given by Arkansas State, driving the player with the ball backwards behind the gain line. Sometimes it's nice just to let those hit breathe, to hear all the bone jarring action. And another momentary delay, but. I hate to keep beating these lines up. These guys are tough. All the cliches you hear about rugby born out on this afternoon on the campus of Stanford University. The way subbing works in rugby is you have 15 players on the field and you have seven possible subs, some of which, by regulation, have to be front row capable, meaning that they can play proper hooker. Those are such specialized technical positions that you've got to have somebody who can always go in there. You just can't throw anybody in. Once you sub out, you're done. Unless you sub out because you're bleeding, then you have 15 minutes to stem the tide. Then you can come back in. Not surprisingly, most do. Good ball fake on the dummy move. Alberry works his way through the middle of the field. Eleman continues the advancement. Jack Turner moves the other direction, gives it off to Tommy Parrish. Here yeah, we see Daly. This guy is very explosive, fun to watch. He's a real artist with the ball. Clever pass, was it forward? Doesn't matter, it's a try. It's a try. Remember, it has to be lateral or backwards. That was in the neighborhood, but it's points for the Tribe. Patrick Harrell able to get it down. And Stephen Daly just setting that up. He has a real flair for running with the ball. You can see him directing traffic, misdirecting the defense, and Patrick Harold there in support. Well, if he wore a green jacket, because he's from Augusta, the home of the Masters, it would be a large coat. See Daly dishes inside to Harold, who's in support. A lot of times it's just being in the right place and be in at pace. Another naive question, is it where the ball is caught or where it's thrown to determine lateral? Where it's caught. Good enough for the try. Now the kick, good as well. Still, a great deal of work to be done for Arkansas Watch. State. Watch Stephen Daly, he's not big but he's quick. You can see he shows the ball outside, making number 14 for Salisbury, cover the line, draws the full back in, and Harrell's supporting inside. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. He gets the try. It's nice to see for Arkansas State. They had a mental error on the previous try off the penalty kick. They're not rolling over. They're continuing to play as hard as they can. These kids here are here to play. They fought hard to get here. And they should be really proud. Nice shot.
Really good game today by Charlie Hobbs. He's out of Denver. He's controlled the game early on. We had a little bit of snipping between the teams, and he just early and, and often reminded them that he is in charge. The other nice thing, he communicates with players from both teams, and he worked with his touch judges to make sure that they were working as a team of three to get the right calls done. I was talking with Dan Lau from USA Rugby yesterday, and he said now that we have team of three, meaning the referee and the two touch judges, that when a controversial call is challenged, and the referee has made that controversial call, sometimes to def defray the attention, he'll look at his touch judge as he's being complained to by the players who think it was a bad call and say, hey, you know, well, I'm just listening to my, my touch <laughs> judge, and they don't have time to get over to the touch judge and complain. So it's a, it's a new technique for referees to defer negative feedback, if you will. Teamwork for the officials as well. And you can see the clock heading south. It is going to be a Salisbury victory. A credit, the tenacity of Arkansas State. Doing all they could offensively in the second half as this one got away from them in a hurry. They just weren't as organized offensively. They weren't as cohesive in their offensive strategy. And defensively, it came down to fitness. Not reorganizing well, but I just love this kid, Stephen Daly. Plays with so much heart. Still has pace in the last minutes of the game. Salisbury figures, hey, we got it in the bag. Let's have some fun here. Let's w bring this game wide open. That's the international sign for forward pass. Right. Excellent. Yes. She's thoroughly confused. Yes. <laughs> Center scrum, for the most part, this creates a very good attacking platform. Salisbury can run on either side and defensively. No time remaining on our official clock. Injury time now on the field. And the Seagulls are flying high. Salisbury University, National Champs, Division II, 2004. A well-played game by Salisbury. Organized, well-coached, and fit. And we talked about it at halftime. I think some decent foreshadowing that conditioning could prove critical that it was born out in the second half. And the celebration is on for the Salisbury Seagulls. They win it, 43-24. We'll hear from the victorious team in just one moment on CSTV. This exclusive presentation of the USA Rugby Collegiate Championship has been brought to you by Bugle Boy, proud sponsor of the 2004 College Championships, and by Nivea for Men, more evolved skin care. Salisbury wins it, 43-24 over Arkansas State's matchup of two, D2 powers, and let's head down to the field with Mindy Bach. Mindy? We're with some elated members of the Salisbury team, as you can imagine, as well as the coach. First appearance, just kind of what are your thoughts and after a long season to wind up like this? No, this is the way they practice, this is the way they played, and this is this is all the expectations we had. Believe me, they trained well for this. This is exactly what we planned for today. If you had to sum up the strength and character of this team, what comes to mind for you? The heart and determination. We, uh, we lost a lot last year, and then we came through, and everybody decided that they were going to sacrifice a lot. And when you get a group of guys that have the heart and determination and, and the willing and the will to, to, to go on and do good, that's oh, that's a strength. We just, we have no quit. It's just no quit, complete total effort. It's awesome. It's what do you awesome. think, what do you, sorry to cut you off there, what do you think on the field was the strength of your team? I mean, he talked about some intangibles. What are the tangibles? On field, it's stamina. I mean, we ran day in, day out. And the guys really, we really set some goals in the beginning of the year after we lost to York and last year's Marfu's first round and the guys just wanted it really bad. I mean, like Bill said, it's just all about heart and, you know, if you want it bad enough, you can have it. Okay, all right. Adam, Bill, and Robert, thank you very much. Congratulations. Enjoy. Yeah, thank you, Mindy. Great point by Adam. It did come down to stamina and conditioning as Salisbury won. Bugle Boy, play of the game presented by Bugle Boy Jeans.
And a play that added up to this victory for Salisbury. That little tenacity flick. right near the try line. Little flick as Matt Rakowski goes over the line. These backs today, all players that showed a ton of heart for Salisbury. Impressive game as they stuck with their game plan, which was kick, kick, kick. They will be celebrating all the way back to the eastern shore of Maryland, taking home with them the Division II Men's Championship for Rugby. For Mindy Bach and 